My name is Joshua from Chosen Vessels, the Preacher's Channel. Today is 8-29-2018. In this video, we are going to explain to you the true meaning of the name of God, the Tetragrammaton Yahweh. And uh, as a matter of fact, there have been multiple attempts to explain what the name of God really means. But its origin and true meaning could not be ascertained. Wherefore, we often come across statements such as these, uh, for an example, on um, Britannica.com, and uh, we read, quote, The personal name of God probably was known long before the time of Moses, unquote, all right? They could not uh, say it for sure, all right? They could not verify the origin of the name Yahweh. And uh, another example in the, the same article, uh, we read, quote, uh, probably knew uh, okay, thus the tribe of Levi to which Moses belonged, probably, all right, they could not verify for sure, knew the name Yahweh, which originally may have been, all right, they, they could not verify it, they could not prove it. And it is because uh, they could not agree on one thing that each person is, uh, everyone has his or her personal interpretation of what the name Yahweh means. And uh, it is along the same line that uh, the distortion of the name of God uh, came to be uh, Jehovah or yeah, Jehovah, Jehovah, which in every in Hebrew does not mean anything. Okay, it is like saying, for example, uh, timey instead of time. You know, it, it, it may sound English, but it is not. English. It does not mean any to Jehovah, as we're about to see. It may sound cool, but it does not mean anything in every. And as a result of all the confusion, some even took the liberty to speculate further on the meaning of the name of God. And one source, for an example, claimed it means uh, behold the nail, behold the hand. Which is an attempt, uh, uh, their attempt to put their own mind into and uh, trying to put uh, the pieces together based on their understanding. All right? The problem is Behold the nail, behold the hand is not biblically supported. I mean, there is no scripture, no verse in the Bible where God proclaimed himself as my name is behold the nail, behold the hand. Or God declares his name saying, I am behold the nail, behold the hand. All right. <clears throat> so today we're going to put aside all speculations and incertitude and establish truth in order that truth might run its race unhindered. And how do I know that what I am about to share with you is true? Okay. My answer is in two, in two visions and in three visions, 
the Lord. God told me the meaning of his name because I asked him to tell me it. All right? The Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. So I asked God to tell me the meaning of his name. Wherefore, just as he showed and explained it to me, I now tell you. It is our approach to have the Lord confirm truth to us. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Is what Jesus said. Uh, said in John chapter 6 verse 63 and uh, we want to make sure God is included in everything that we do rather than relying merely on our own understanding wherefore in this presentation we will show you four things uh, the true meaning of Yahweh and and secondly what it was in the beginning in point three how its variations came to be and in point four how the name of god affects and relates to us as well as everything around us with that being said, what does God's name mean? What does Yahweh mean? What was God's name from the beginning? How does it affect us? And how does it affect our universe, our world? And the answer is as follows. Just as the Lord showed and explained it to me in two separate visions in the night of 8 26 2018 and in the first vision the lord showed me the original form of his how its variation came to be and he gave me one example to explain it and i woke up from the first vision i was very excited but literally, I said to the Lord that he forgot to tell me what his name means. Then I prayed him to tell me what his name means because I said to him, that is what people, that's what we are curious about. And after that, I fell back asleep. And the Lord showed me a second vision, which woke me up around 5.30 a.m. last Sunday morning, August 26, 2018. And it took me a few hours, but I managed to put all the information together in a chart, in this chart. And uh, here it is. So, this is in a chart what uh, the Lord showed and taught me and explained to me about the origin and the meaning of his name. All right, the first part is going to explain to us what, who, where, and what and why about the name of God. All right, this is representation of the name of God. This is Yahweh represented. And um, here, it's, it is broken down, okay? The pictograph, the representation of Yahweh. And then here we have the root consonants, okay, the phoneme, um, and a few examples. And the words that are represented in the name of God. And then what it means, okay? What each letter means. And then I will show you Bible references. Then I will tell you who God is based on his name, Yahweh. And then why and what. You know, as, as far as that, 
has to do with us and as far as that has to do with our decisions so so what is the meaning of God's name and who is God and what is he or why are we here okay so the pictograph is this is the uh, the first um, letter the ya yeah, yeah and then the the v yav yeah, okay so because it is a name you cannot separate it okay however i am dividing dividing it up so we can explain it so we can look into it deeper so the cons the root consonant in the name of god are the y and the v okay so the phoneme is y v y v wherefore we have the y v or y v as a matter of fact in my vision god told me that king solomon is the one who initiated the Yahweh version of his name during his uh, inaugural ceremony of the first temple. And then God said that his name originally has been uh, Yev, Yev from the beginning. All right, so this is God's name from the beginning, Yev, Yev. So Solomon came with the version Yahweh. And why? Okay. In the Greek and in the Aramaic, as well as uh, other uh, Germanic, Indo-European languages, this is what is happening. Okay. Now, let's explain why some are saying Yahweh and others are saying Yahweh or Yahweh. Okay. So, in the Eve, in the real Hebrew language, there are 30, all right, 30 letters, okay, uh, seven uh, vowels and and 20, 22, right, 23 uh, consonants, all right, there it is, blaton, it means 30. Then... If you compare the Eve letters with the Aramaic letters, we see that the Aramaic is short. How many letters? Eight letters. All right. The Eve, the Hebrew language, has 30 and 30 plus letters. But the Aramaic is short, it's letters. So there are things in Eve that the people of uh, the Arameans could not say. And V is one of those letters. So instead of Ya, V, the people of uh, those who speak Aramaic would say Yav. Okay, the V is substituted with a letter which is close in in intonation or in resemblance, and it is the V. Okay, wherefore we have the first variation Yav instead of Yav Yav, which is the original name of God. Secondly, okay. If you compare the Eve with the Greek, we see also that the Greek language is also short, okay? Six letters, okay? The Eve has 30, but the Greek has only 24. Also, the Greeks could not say Yave, okay? So they too will have to substitute either words with something different okay so the greeks here okay don't they don't have the letter uh yeah in their alphabet so they substitute it with a, a a j as 
as a matter of fact, um, during my uh, own researches, I when I came across the same article on Britannica.com, they are saying the same thing. It reads, quote, Latin speaking Christian scholars substituted the year which does not all right, exist in Latin, okay, with an I or a J, the latter of which exists in Latin as a variant form of I, all right? All right, that's exactly what I was talking about when I said that the Greek letters are short six, so they could not say Yahweh. It is the same thing they have done with uh, Yeshua or y y Joshua or uh, Oshia, okay? Jesus, they don't have the year, so they substituted it with a J, okay? So, then if you go to the uh, to the Germanic Indo-European uh, languages, the German as, as an example, they too are short. How many letters? Four. Four plus. Okay. So in the German alphabet, there are only 26 letters. So the Germans also are short. In, in the English, it is the same thing. In, in French, it is the same thing. Okay. So the, the most of the European people cannot say Yave. Okay, so they too had to substitute the letters. And in French, it is the uh, G. And uh, in German, it will be the W. Okay, they will, they, they, you will see Yahweh instead of Yahweh because, you know, the, the V has the, the full sound. In, Ger in German, okay? So it depends uh, on uh, your culture or your language. So not everyone is capable of saying Yahweh, okay? So you will hear some say Yahweh or Yahweh or uh, Yahweh or, you know, even the B. So we need to be patient. In that regards to understand that you know we're not all you know equal language wise so Yahweh God said is his name from the beginning but what does it mean okay so the words represented in the name of God is Yah and the V and uh, Yah it means in Eve, it is the wind, it is the air, it is also the breath of life, it is also the spirit of God. And let's prove all that. In speaking of the Yah as wind, we read in John 3 verse 8, where the Lord Jesus Christ compared the wind or the movement of of wind to the move of the holy spirit of his spirit we read quote the wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound of it but cannot tell where it comes and in the every bible the wind is what yah Okay, so the spirit of God is not only the air or the wind in Eve, it is Yah. Okay, and the same word is still in use today. I still uh, in Eve, Yah is still the same, it has not changed. Okay, wherefore, Yah, Yah in Eve is a metaphor for the wind and also for the spirit of God.
and a quick insertion about the Hervé. Um, the, the Hervé, as well as the Hervé culture, including the Bible, has gone, uh, has traveled, uh, traveled through throughout time and civilizations and cultures. And as a result, um, a few things were either uh, distorted or lost. However, the positive side is that the Ave uh, came back to us improved and, and better structured with uh, punctuations and now we can we can read it easier and, and more understandably Wherefore, uh, whereas in the beginning uh, there were no punctuation you know there was no there were no no question marks there was no comma there was no uh, exclamation mark there was no period so everything is like a like, it's, 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 it's a jumble you know you couldn't tell what is a chapter and what is not but it is because of all the uh, the you know, the exiles and you know going through times that um, the Eve has has come to be organized and and it is better we can read it you know so uh, if you want to read the or you want to see the Eve in its original format in its original text. I'm afraid that you're not going to be able to read it because there will be no punctuation. And instead of letters that are familiar or that you are familiar with, it will be nothing but symbols. And imagine reading uh, the Bible with nothing but cons consonants or with nothing but pictures and images or drawings, you know. So praise God, I right? it's a it was it's a bad thing that the language, you know, kind of vanished in a way, not literally, okay, because we have been speaking it still, uh, you know, but the good thing is because of all the the the, the traveling from one culture to another, the Eve is now better, okay, it has uh, punctuation. Wherefore, uh, we have the prophecy, right? Zephaniah 3, 9. For the Lord, for then will I, says the Lord, will I turn to the people a pure language that they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent, unquote. So, Yahweh, Yahweh is currently in the process of restoring the Eve, the Eve language back to, to, to his people, back to all of us. So we, we may serve him with one consent, meaning we will soon have no confusion in knowing what, uh, what means what, and everyone will no longer be uh, expressing his or her own opinion, you know, based on what or he or she thinks. You know, the Bible means, you know, and by Eve, we're not talking about just, you know, uh, a specific group, uh, a specific group of people. We're talking about God's people in general. OK, all the tribes. OK. And um, uh, the Lord our God is one and his name is one. So we're going to have the same understanding when it comes to God. And speaking of which, um, our every learning class courses are in progress. And, uh, you know, if you wish to join us, uh, feel free to send us an email or a message. And uh, we will plug you in, you know, because we're going in details of the letters and we're, trying to, we're, we're working at showing you how to pronounce it, how to speak it. How to use it, and how to use it to interpret not only the Bible but also everything around you. And uh, the Yah also means the uh, the breath of life, which is Genesis chapter two verse seven.
quote, and the Lord God forms man of the dust of the ground and breathed, I right, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul, unquote. So God breathed Yah on Adam and he became a living soul. And the third point is the spirit. Yah also means the spirit of God. And that is John 20 verse 22. Quote, and when he, the Lord had said, he breathed on them and said unto them, receive what? The Holy Ghost. Unquote. So, Yah has three meanings in the heavy. It means the air, the wind. It means the breath of life. It means the spirit of God. Now, let's look at the V. If you look on my chart, it is what? It is a cup. It is a glass. It is a container. It is a big well. It's a big, deep hole. And how do I know that? That is exactly what the Lord told me in my vision. That's why he taught me and explained to me in my vision. And uh, I put it in a chart uh, so we may see it. This is letter V in Yah-V. Right? In Yahweh, Yahweh, that's the letter V. So in my vision, the Lord taught me and showed me that this letter, okay, this is how, uh, this is the letter that, you know, came, or uh, this is the letter that represents a cup. If you look at it closely, it is the same thing. And he said, same thing with letter V. Okay, so by letter V, we're representing a container, a cup. Okay, so if you say Yav, the V, you're talking about a cup with a handle. But if you say Yav, you're talking about this, all right, a glass. It's the same thing, it's a variation. Okay. And uh, in Job chapter 12, verse 10, we read, Job 12, 10, quote, In whose hand is the soul of every living thing and the breath of all mankind, unquote. All right, so it is in God's hand. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 17, we read, quote, And he, the Lord, is before all things, and by him, all things consist, unquote. And if you look at the word consist in our English dictionary, you see that it means what? To be comprised or contained, all right? So in God, all things, everything is contained. So if you ask the question, who is God? He says his name is Yahweh. Everything is contained in him. This is Yah. This is the wind. This is the breath of life. This is the spirit of God. And this is the V. It's a container. It's a cup. So Yahweh, Yahweh, as we say, means the container of life. This, the sustainer of life. The fountain of life. Wherefore, in Isaiah 43, verse 11, the Lord proclaimed his name. Quote, I, even I, am the Lord. I am Yahweh. I am Yahweh. And beside me, there is no Savior. Unquote. I am Yahweh. I am the sustainer of life. The, 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 the container of life. The source of life. The, the, the one who holds Everything within himself, Yahweh, Yahweh. 
And Jesus says in John 5, 26, quote, For as the Father, as God hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son, to Jesus, to have life in himself. Unquote. Jesus proclaims himself as Yahweh. Just as God, the Lord, has life in himself, just as God contains life and everything in it, Jesus, the Lord, says he is Yahweh. He contains life. He is the sustainer of life, the fountain of life. And the apostle John testifies in John chapter 1, verse 4, quote, In him, in Jesus, in Yahweh, was life. All right, he, he contains life, and the life was the light of man. Unquote. So, if you if you wonder where is God, the Bible says we are all in His in Him inside Him. We breathe, we walk, and we move in Him. In Him, we have our being. The Word is in your mouth, in your heart. It is it is near you. Okay, God is not, you know, He we're, we're kind of swimming in Him. We breathe His Spirit, and we 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 are all in Him, like here. It's like a the whole universe in a cup. Everything in this life, including you and I, are in God. That's why it is important. Because if you, you, you refuse the Lord Jesus, if you, you, you don't want to be a part of him, he says what? Apart from me, ye can do nothing. Outside God, there is no life. You would literally perish. That's why Jesus says, I am the truth, the way, and the life. And John 3.16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but will have eternal life. Outside God, God says there is no savior, brothers and sisters. And this is what the name of God means. It means it is Yahweh, Yahweh, Yahweh. Okay, from the beginning, God says it has been Yahweh. It means what? The sustainer of life, container, the big, the deep container of life, and all of us are in God. We're already here. Hopefully, this has helped. Uh, broaden your understanding of the name of God. Okay, this chart, I will be passing it around or sharing it with uh, uh, with with our group in our Bible study. So again, we're inviting you to join us because this is only um, a crunched version of the the Hebrew, the Eve letters. Okay, so join us, and uh, we will discuss. The word of God and we you know more more many other things that God has been sharing with us that we can you know share publicly you know for the sake of the enemy for the sake of you know people trampling over over them you know so uh, thanks for watching and my name is Joshua from Chosen Vessels the Preachers channel until next time